Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Emmy Heat Podcast. I'm Karen Bryant. What's up, guys? Alan Jovan here. So I know we promised you we were going to be back together together because you you are in L.A., but still our schedules are a little a little bit tight. Um, so next week in person, for sure. For sure, for sure. For sure. Oh, actually, I'm in New York next week. So oh, my sure. God. <laughs> what are you doing there? Uh, just going, um, now that I have a little time off, I'm going to yeah. go do some stuff, uh, meet up with my agency, Soul, and they've got a bunch of meetings for me, so hopefully... Uh, some meetings go well and some big opportunities come from it. Cool. Well, people should know, I mean, obviously it's not quite Father's Day yet, but you did do a whole campaign for Lord and Taylor and stuff too. You and your your little man did, right? Yeah, yeah, it was cool, man. Me and my son Cage and even my dog Buster uh, got brought on the job and we shot a job in Malibu. So um, it'll be cool. Like you said, Lord and Taylor, that's the second time yeah. they've, They've, they've worked with me, but this is the first time they brought in my family, and it comes out on Father's Day, so I'm, yes. I'm eager to see that one. That's great. Well, good luck with that. And, you know, uh, one of the things, you made a great suggestion on my picture on Instagram that we should be having a champagne podcast. Oh, Because I crushed true. that girl the other day. Man. <laughs> you want to know it's so funny? Uh, if we had a champagne podcast every time we went, it'd be crazy because, you know, it's a, se- it's a season, so I think I have like six or seven matches or something, but... um. Coming up, six or seven. Yeah, maybe. it's like the season is, is six or seven matches or something. So uh, for those of you didn't see the podcast last week, I, I started to play uh, singles in my tennis. I've been playing tennis for a few years now on a team, but I switched to playing singles. So this past weekend was my first uh, singles match in the league. And uh, I was playing line one, which is, you know, supposedly means I'm playing the best girl. Well, I are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it was great because um, I, you know, and I was, it's funny because I don't really get nervous, like for my job or anything like that. But I was a little nervous um, just because for me, like, I don't want to suck. I want to, just like when you're fighting, like you want to do what you know you can do. It's not about yep. you're afraid or anything. You're just like thinking a lot and you want to implement, you know, your game plan or whatever. Um, but so I won the first set six, three, I mean, you know, they were, they were kind of tight matches or whatever, but the second set I won six, one, and it was great because she started to mentally break, you know what I mean? And I know you guys see that in fights. It's the same thing. Like you can see somebody on the other side of the court just starting to lose it and they get the balls out more and they get frustrated and they get a little bit more vocal. And for me, like the more I see you bugging out, the more calm I got. So it was just funny to me. Um, but then she told me afterwards, she's like, wow, I, I haven't lost in a really long time. My oh, team, wow. My team's going to be really surprised. And I was like, well. Yeah. I love the way that, I love the fact that you take what you do for a living and like breaking down fights and analyzing things totally. and you kind of applied it to this as well. You noticing that people are mentally breaking it. And you, and you hear the fighters talk about it all the time. For how, sure. How, how you jump on them, you smell blood in the water, right. and you kind of associated that with tennis as well and, and got the big win. I did. Yeah, it was good. I mean, and she got me, you know, listen, she got me in a couple of points, and yeah, I had to, like, make some adjustments or whatever. Um, but, yeah, it was it was good. I do. I listen. I think of, like, all the different coaching I hear in my head. I think of all the stuff you guys go through, and I'm like, all right. So that was fun. So I'm happy about it. So I'm happy Good about stuff. It. Well, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll drink some H2O for you today. Yes, I'm, me I'm, too. <laughs> and I'll go work out after. <laughs> we get a healthy, exactly. a healthy celebration. Yes. Well, so uh, that was on Saturday before I went to work. And then obviously we need to talk about UFC 210 because it's funny, a card that um, I thought was going to be a good card on paper anyway, but then turned out to be so dramatic and have so yeah. many uh, incredible storylines that um, mostly today we'll probably focus on the whole DC Rumble thing and, <clears throat> and Gegard and Chris. But uh, just I'm curious what your initial take is on the actual fight between DC and Rumble. What did you make of it? Yeah, I mean, first off, like you said, it was um, it was it was a great card. Um, the fights were great, and you know what? Like, whenever you have a little bit of drama or a little bit of, you know, things go wrong, it um, it makes it more exciting. You know, it wasn't a it wasn't a boring card for sure. Right. Um, as far as the fights, DC and Rumble, man, it, Rumble obviously surprised everybody right away, mm-hmm. initiating the grappling. Um, I thought DC did a great job. You know, one of my friends sent me uh, a thing for, I don't really, I don't ever, I don't ever um, bet on fights yeah. because it takes the passion away. Like, I like to watch it and whatever I'm instinctually feeling and my emotions, that's what we talk about today. Right. And that's why we were able to have these good podcasts together because we know how we, how we felt that time. Yes. But anyway, what I'm getting at is he asked me what, he said, DC is the underdog, and which I didn't realize that, yeah. that Rumble was the favorite in that fight, which kind of surprised me. And I said, well, you know what? I would pick DC to submit him or TKO him in the second round. And that would have won him like $9,000 on the $900 oh bet. I don't know if he made that bet, but man, I called DC winning. 
when we did the yeah. podcast together. If I would have bet, I would have been in the money. I did not bet. But DC did pretty much a lot like what I thought he was going to do. He, he, he weathered the storm. He somewhat stayed away from the big shots. I mean, yeah. he got hit in the nose. We don't know what's going on with his nose, yeah. but it, it looked a little crooked yeah, for sure. Um, but, but, you know, the, to, to, to point out that, too, you know, they were saying his nose is broken. I'm really curious to find out what happened to his nose. Maybe he, previously in wrestling he, he broke the cartilage or broke his nose. Yeah. But I've, I haven't seen, I don't think any broken noses that I can recall that never bled. You know what I mean? Right. Every broken nose I've ever seen in my lifetime, which is a lot of them, um, has bled. So for his nose to be obviously crooked but with no blood, it, it, it yeah. made me think that maybe he had some kind of cartilage thing and it wasn't really broken. It was just, who knows? Right. But um, he weathered that storm. He fought through it. He did what he was supposed to do and wrestle Anthony Johnson down. And you could see Anthony kind of, the same thing happening as the as the right. previous fight, mentally starting to break. DC jumped on that, and I thought DC did a great job. At one point, he had Anthony Johnson. He was kind of riding him on the ground. He had him in like mm -hmm. kind of a, a top top half guard position, yeah. and you can see um, that was when DC went and kind of grabbed his base arm, mm -hmm. and he was kind of twisting Rumble's base arm. He had his other leg hooking his half guard, and basically what I'm getting at is, Rumble Johnson at that point was carrying all of DC's weight. He's a big man. He he's is. a heavy guy. Yeah. And he's a wrestler, so he probably feels twice as heavy. That minute that he was in that position, or two minutes, carrying all of DC's weight, and DC was just chipping away at him, mm -hmm. punching him in the head, I knew that was the beginning of the end. I knew that if he survived that point, it was only a certain amount of time because it was just demoralizing. And you could see the way the fight played out after that. That that right there, to me, was when, when Rumble Johnson kind of said, all right, I, I'm not going to win this fight. Yeah, it's interesting because I agree with you about the um, DC being so much heavier. You know, yeah, like you said, you know, and, and people do forget, I think, that he was a heavyweight initially and moved down yeah. divisions because of Kane. Uh, but it is hard for DC to make that weight, and of course we'll get into that anyway. But yes, I agree with you. I think he knows how to, to use it more, better than anybody. Um, and... Yeah, I guess I was, he told us afterwards on Fox, we talked to him about the nose, because, yeah, I agree with you, it was crooked, and he said, yeah, it got rearranged, but again, yeah. I agree that maybe it's not 100% broken, because I know they were saying during the broadcast, hey, don't blow your nose, your eyes will swell up, and it looked like right. DC sort of blew his nose, and his eyes didn't swell up, so yeah, maybe uh, it's not 100% broken, but he ate that, he ate that uh, Rumble's calf on that one thing, um, yeah. so I think, you know, obviously that, that was... Uh, what did it to his nose um but i think yeah if you if you go in and you try to out wrestle dc you're gonna lose so the whole idea of rumble with that strategy instead of just letting the hands go because he did you know again he, he landed some stuff i didn't quite understand it um unless he was trying to surprise dc and maybe rumble thought his conditioning was better this time i don't know also there's maybe the idea that sometimes you know you want to um beat somebody at their own game you know what I mean? I don't know. It's it, it's hard to say because now, obviously, it's after the fight and he's retired and this and that. But in the moment, if you're just observing, like, what he was doing in the moment at that time, yeah, I was a little bit confused. And I thought, yeah, if you're starting to play the wrestling game with DC, you're just – you're not going to win that. It, it was almost to me, Karen, as if he was trying to take a page out of John Jones' book. When mm -hmm. John Jones and DC fought the first time, John Jones had a lot of success against DC, against the cage. He put him against the cage and he took – uh, DC down a couple times he didn't really like nobody is able really able to take DC down mm -hmm. and keep him down and keep ground him. and pound him but John Jones did take him down a couple times that was the first time we've really seen DC taken down and everybody was kind of shocked like, oh, my, oh god. my god like John right. Jones is out wrestling him but he wasn't really doing damage um in the wrestling yeah. taking department taking him down but he was slowly kind of chipping away at DC when John Jones fought him right. it's almost though like Rumble Johnson said, you know what, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take him down. I'm going to show that I'm going to wrestle or two. But I cannot imagine in any way that his coaches give that to him as part of the game plan. Can you, can, can you imagine his coaches saying, okay, we're going to wrestle him. You know, Two-time no Olympian, way. don't worry, you got this. Yeah, I think it was just something at the spur of the moment, the energy in the, in the ring that he said he just wanted to go and do it. Were you surprised by the retirement thing? Because we actually at work had heard uh, – no pun intended, rumblings about that before the fight. Um, we were talking about it, and it, I knew that Patrick was probably going to retire. Um, right. But the, uh, the rumble thing, you know, I think for most of the world was a surprise. And even when we were talking about it at work when we first heard it, I was like, what? Why would he do that? Um, so there is the idea that, you know, maybe he just had already mentally, you know, checked out and wasn't 100% in the fight. Um, but 
I, I'm, I'm bummed that we don't see Rumble anymore. I think he's awesome. He's so fun to watch. And over the years has just been really, really great with, with me personally and with uh, MMA Heat and everything. And obviously, yeah, I, I really do wish him, uh, really, really wish him the best. Um, but I don't know who should be next for DC because, you know, they had Jimmy Manawa there and he's been doing all the right things. And yes, John Jones is the greatest ever but again, I, I, DC had a point where it's like you don't get to reward the the guy doesn't get to be rewarded for 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 putting all the stuff on the line and putting other fighters in jeopardy with their fights and that inconsistency and that unreliability. I kind of feel like you can't give it right to John, even though I want to see that fight. Yeah, and I think I think the UFC kind of realizes that. I think yeah. that's why that's why Manawa was probably there to yep. help promote that possible fight. I think DC realizes that. That um, you know what, John Jones isn't as reliable. Yeah. Um, and I also saw some rumors or something that if John Jones does come back, he won't be granted the uh, the main car, right. the main event slot. Right. And obviously, that's something that DC would want. So yeah. I think business wise, DC is kind of saying, "Well, look, Manawa is probably the guy I might be, uh, I'll mm -hmm. be fighting next. Um, let me talk some trash to him." Um, but I also get, you know what, I thought this would be kind of an opportunity for. DC to sell the fight with him and John Jones. Yeah. But I get it. I get it. Like he said some 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 he took some shots at John Jones during fight week. Yeah, if we all remember some during some of the interviews, John Jones when he had the opportunity in front of the cameras, he took some shots right back yeah. at DC saying that was the the dirtiest thing he had ever seen in combat right. sports. Uh, it's not the, the dirtiest thing he's ever seen. I know it's I mean, ironic. It's like, you know well... I mean? it's like it's like a, it's like a, it's like okay, he got away with one, but it's like the dirtiest the thing dirtiest ever in combat no. sports. Yeah. No. But what I'm getting at is, I think DC in his mind, okay, John Jones, DC just did what he had to do. He's a champion. He's got all the momentum. He's got the cards in his hand. Mm -hmm. John Jones is still from the sideline trying to get back in, trying to get back into the money, get the big event. Right. So I think in DC's mind, he was kind of like, I'm not even gonna give him the camera time. Yeah. I'm not even, I don't even want to speak of his name. Why am I giving John Jones the limelight all of a sudden? granting him his mm -hmm. wish to have the rematch when he doesn't deserve it. I just did what I had to do. Right. I'm going to let John Jones earn his way back to the top. So I think that's why DC didn't really play into the John Jones back and forth thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And, and the tricky thing is now, though, um, you know, with Ryan Bader out of the picture, uh, going to Bellator with Rumble now, you know, that's two spots that just opened up in the light heavyweight division. Um, yeah. And so I've got to remember the rankings, but you you know, you, you have Glover Teixeira and Alexander Gustafson are going to be fighting pretty soon. You know, um, Shogun just won his last fight. It, it does kind of shift some things up and in a way open some things up. Manawa and Gus have already fought and they're training partners now, so they would never fight each other. So you can't even say, you know, uh, that's a title eliminator necessarily. Like, I don't... If if Manawa gets DC, I guess John Jones gets the winner of Gus Teixeira. He's fought both of those guys, but that's actually the only pretty much person he should fight, right? I mean, he's fought everybody. He's already beaten everybody, so he... <clears throat> it's tough right now. Like, who is really nice for him? The, you know, I've yeah. always thought of the two hundred five division, the light heavyweight division, as one of the the toughest divisions. Not always. Right. There's just always like very well known names or killers. There's all you know the Chuck Liddells, the John Jones, right. the big names of the sport. In, in in MMA, like okay, when you think of boxing, you think of Mike Tyson, you think the heavyweight champion of the world. That's yeah. the baddest man on the planet. When I kind of think of the baddest man on the planet, I don't necessarily think of the heavyweight heavies. division in UFC. I kind of think of the. I've always thought of the light heavyweight. The light heavies. You know, yeah. because they're the they're just the more agile, bigger men. Yeah. And they're always the kind of the bigger name, the, the Chuck Liddells and that and the John Joneses. They're always right. the bigger name. Um, right now, though, I feel like the division is kind of weak. And, you know, mm -hmm. let's it not is. forget the UFC got rid of a couple of guys, a couple of big prospects. Right. I think it was two of the Russians that were. Um, well, what, then he came back, though. The um, I know which one you're talking about, but Nikita. Uh, Nikita yeah, yeah, yeah. Like but that. the other guy did. They did figure it out, and, and he's back. So, yeah, I was kind of shocked that they did that. Guys that were in the top ten when the division is right. kind of getting scattered right now. Sirkinov. But... Wasn't it Misha Sirkinov? I'm blanking right now, but yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, I, I'm not quite sure um, who's next for him. I would, I would say that um, – what's his name that fought in London with me? Jimmy. Would probably be – yeah, Jimmy would probably be the next guy. Because that's that's what I'm saying. Like, otherwise, you would say Manawa gets the winner of Glover and Gus. But like I said, if it's Gus, he said they would never fight. You know, yeah. um, unless maybe even if it was for a title, uh, uh, the title. But he was really pretty 
pretty adamant about not ever wanting to fight Alexander again because after they fought, they became teammates and they're so close. So that yeah. would be a weird thing if you say, okay, yeah, Jimmy, you have to fight the winner of Glover and uh, or, or or John. Or how about this? DC fights the winner of Gus Teixeira. Jimmy Manoa fights John Jones. Maybe that would work. I mean, I think it's also going to have to do with like timeline. Timing. Like when when do guys want to fight? You know, some guys want to fight right away. DC might want to take six months off now. You know, you never know. Yeah, well, and it's tricky too because you know John should become legal. You know, or I don't mean it that way, but you know, uh, this is going to end in the summer. Um, so you know, he could do that. But yeah, DC at the same time, you know, yeah, you, you want to heal up and stuff like that. But at the same time, you don't want to wait too long. He's already you know getting up there in age. So it's a really tough situation for DC, I think. And yeah, how all this timing works out. Jimmy Mano was around the same age, but in fight years, you know, his body is a lot younger. Uh, John Jones, we know, is both physically and and legitimately uh, youth youthful. Um, I don't know. It's an interesting thing. But um, but I do want to know what you think about the towel because, you know, mm. uh, he, he, it, it, look, it wasn't a good look. He got away with one, man. Yeah. He got away with one. Um, it's tough. I've been... I've been thinking about this, Karen, ever since it happened. And I think about, like, how do you define this as cheating? Okay. It, no, I'm saying, and what level is what I'm saying? Okay. It, it, it was cheating. So if if somebody does something like, if, if you knock a guy down and you kick him in the face while right. he's down, and, and it's cheating, that's a very dirty look. Right. That's defined as cheating, though. And then you look at doing the towel thing. That's also defined as cheating, but there's different levels of right. cheating. Um, it, it doesn't matter. I, I, I do like DC, so I'm not being pro DC, right. but I'm saying I don't think it was that big of a deal. He did not make the weight, but like DC said, with the new weigh-in rule, it's, you've always got like an hour after weigh-in. He would have had two weight. hours. Right, So, but but now with the, with the early weigh-in, I don't know how that rule works, but DC did say that at least champions are granted two mm -hmm. hours. Mm -hmm after the 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Right. early weigh-in. So in my eyes, it's not that big of a deal because even if he was having a tough weight cut and they said, look, you didn't make the weight, time's up, you still have two hours to cut a pound and a half, he would have made the weight. So that kind of threw the whole cheating thing off the table. He did what he had to do, and I put myself in his position. I'm like, okay, if I'm the champion, I've got all this going on, I'm trying to make money for my family, I'm trying to give the fans the fight. They want right. to see a title fight. We all wanted want the fight, it. right. They don't want to see one person eligible for the title, one person not. I'm doing what I got to do to make the fight happen. So it's like, yes, he cheated, but it's not like he hurt somebody when they were down or did right. something very, very intentional to do something very bad, a bad, a, a black eye on the sport. Right. He just was doing what he had to do to make the fight happen. And, and, and if he would have got caught, he still would have been able to make the weight within two hours. So it's not that big of a cheating in my, in my eyes. Yeah, it's not a PED. It's not a performance enhancer. It's not something, like you said, that can get somebody else hurt. Um, I think part of the problem with this whole thing was that it seemed like the commission was just making up rules as they went along. Do you know what I mean? It was like, oh, he gets on the scale. He doesn't make it. Oh, give court. him another yeah. chance. If he doesn't get it, then he gets two, you know, two more hours. Like, I feel like that was, a, a, a big part of it was just the, un, the, 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 the look like they just were scripting it as they went along. Um, but I agree with you that, yes, I believe he would have made the weight if he had been given the two hours. But the funny thing is, is the way he phrased it, it made it sound almost like he would have had three chances because he said, you know, he got on the scale. He didn't make the weight. The commission said, you, you know, you can have another try. And if not, you'll have two hours. So ultimately, that means like three tries. Um, and so we were saying, OK, even if you were, you know, that old saying, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Even if you were trying to put one over, um, Maybe you should have waited a couple of minutes, like to 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 come out that quickly, and reweigh in, you know, and make the weight that quickly. I think was a bad look. Um, so, it, so you're saying you thought that the towel thing was premeditated? So let's try out. Let's try. Well, the towel I don't know. Thing. See, w the funny thing is, is I was uh, that was a that was a school day. You know, every now and then you got to be a real a real person and go to school, right? So I'm watching the whole the storyline in the morning before I left to take uh, the Munchkin to school, and I'm like, oh my god, time's running out, time's running out, time's running out. Neither DC or Rumble has weighed in. So I didn't know until later on when I looked, because uh, then I saw this thing. Oh, he made it, but there's whole thing that the first time he was actually already naked and in the towel because I, I in my mind, yeah, in my so mind was, i was like he was... oh he tried it with the shorts then he took the shorts off and came out with a towel but no then when i saw it obviously he was it was the towel on the very first attempt too but then when he came out with the second towel it was sort of like okay he walked out with a towel then the commission had a towel is this now he needs more support 
because they were going to try the leaning on it thing. Um, and so I think that the, the towel thing was like, hey, let's try this and see if we get away with it type thing. Like, yeah. The other thing is, but again, he I agree, he would have made the weight uh, in the allotted time. But the other thing is, you know, wh- whose fault is it in a way? Because... If you're trying to do it, like you said, everybody wants this fight. We all want this fight to happen. He's doing his thing. Everybody's looking down at the scale. Like, it's not like the commission couldn't have seen, like, hey, what are you doing with the extra towel and leaning? Like, right. it, it, it's not your fault in a way, like, if you get away with something. And I'm not trying to say, like, that sounds really weird as a parent. Like, hey, don't do it. But if you get away with it, good on you. But you know what I mean? I kind of agree. It's, it's kind of like in fighting where we don't stop fighting until the ref pulls us off of the guy. Right. So if I punch the guy and maybe I accidentally poke him in the eye and he's saying you hit me in the eye and the ref says keep fighting look i'm gonna keep fighting right that's kind of what happened he wasn't called for anything he they, they, as soon as they said look you made weight they celebrated they just by the just by the celebration i think you look back and you look how hard they celebrated his his, his one of his coaches came and hugged him when he's butt naked well, I'm I'm naked, thinking, I know. that is the wrong that is the wrong time to be hugging dc D- dc's like in the zone totally his buddy's hugging him He's still butt naked. So it was funny. kind of a funny moment. So funny. But I'm like, damn, like they're celebrating. Well, I guess so because they probably went on the pre-scale. Before you jump on the official scale, we weigh each other yeah. in, in the training room. They know right away what you're weighing. So he probably went in and he said, dude, you're a pound and a half over. we got to get on the scale anyway. Let's right. try it out. Right. Boom. Two minutes later, he makes the weight. They're like, holy shit, we did it. We made it. Their minds are blown. But like I said, at the end of the day, he still would have had another two hours yeah. or so to make the weight. And I don't even think this, I'm not even sure, but I don't even think there's like a one, two, or three attempt type thing. I think it's like you have two hours. If you want to get on a scale every five minutes, as long as you okay, make as it within you... that two hour time window, you're fine. So like as far as the attempts, I don't think I don't think I don't think there's like a specific you have one try. Well, yeah, and the thing that's tricky about it, too, now, because um, we were saying, okay, well, maybe, you know, Rumble didn't really talk about it beforehand, and we're like, okay, well, maybe he's saving it, and if he loses, then he'll make an appeal or whatever. Um, But he supposedly, I guess, is is filing a complaint, not really an appeal, but kind of a, hey, New York Commission, get your act together type thing, and then supposedly uh, asking for 20% of his purse or something because he didn't really make the weight. So that's a storyline, I guess, to keep watching. Um, You know, it's tough because I love DC. I work with him. The guy's great. Um, so I don't like that there's kind of this asterisk on it. That being said, I don't agree that it's the dirtiest thing that's ever been done in MMA. Right. <laughs> I think. Uh, and to go back to Rumble, um, you said you, you said that, that I you asked me earlier, kind of if if I if that caught me off guard with yeah. him with him retiring. retiring. I had no clue. And it was funny when he did his speech. He must have told DC initially because DC goes, you go first, you go first. And I was wondering why he did that. So I think he probably said, I'm going to retire, man. Thank you. This is my last fight. DC allowed him to go. Very good at DC to do that. But then Rumble gets on the mic and he's like, where are my coaches at? And yeah. dude, we all started butt cracking up laughing. Like everybody with the fight, we were like, why does he care about his coaches? Right. And then when he said this, you know, when he, when you got the feeling that he was retiring, right. we all got pretty sad because yeah. everybody loved seeing him. Um, I'm just confused. You know, I've been seeing rumors that, you know, it's something to do with football. He's talking about the L.A. Rams. Right. Obviously, I say obviously, but I don't believe he would be playing. You know, he's not going to be playing. Or, like, what's he going to be, a trainer? Or, like, what what position is there that they would be paying him enough? Because I would think that Rumble Johnson makes pretty good money in the UFC. He's been in the UFC for a very long time. He's had a ton of fights. He's renegotiated his contract so many times, fought for the title. He gets a lot of bonuses. You, you saw on the countdown or embedded, he drives up to the gym in a Bentley. Yeah. So he's he's making good money. He he fights a lot. You know, right. he, I get it that it, you know it is grueling, and, and we all have those thoughts. Yeah. How long am I going to do this? But he's still at the prime of his career, yeah. making good money. He must have had a better offer on the table, and it just makes me very curious what the offer for a professional football team could be, where he's going to be making. Uh, over half a million dollars a year because I'd assume he's probably making at least half a million a year with with his fight purses and stuff. Yeah, I don't I don't know what the job is yet either. Um, and I know it's funny because sometimes when people say, "Oh, it's definitely not me going to play football," then that totally means it's you going to play football or whatever. You know, so I'm not exactly sure what it is uh, either. Um, 
well, I, I, I don't I don't know, but you know, he did say afterwards that he's like, I just was tired of rolling around, you know, and and getting punched, and I'm tired of the grind, and and um and I can respect that he's done it a really long time, um, yeah. you know, and if your heart's not in it anymore, and you're up, you're only fighting the most dangerous people there is. I applaud that. You know, like I said, agree with you. Totally bummed that he's not going to be here anymore because I'm a big fan. But, uh, but yeah, you got to applaud the guy getting out when he still feels good about, you know, his body and all that stuff. And he didn't take too much damage and he's still got a lot of life in front of him. So, pretty cool. I agree. And, and you know what? I'm not going to close the door completely on Rumble Johnson making a return because yeah. he kind of said it in the interview. If it didn't work out, maybe he would come back. Yeah. And he's still young. He's still in his prime. And I feel like, you know, maybe he does something else and he still has that itch. He could always come back and it would be it would be an even bigger return, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, the, the co-main event that night, too, was, uh, I mean, just really hard. Um, so yeah. obviously we know Gegard Mousasi ended up getting the victory via TKO because essentially the doctor mm-hmm. said that Chris couldn't continue fighting. Um, illegal. They, they first thought that. Gegard threw illegal knees. So Mergliata stops the action, gives Chris some time. Hey, you've been fouled. Catch your breath. Let's see what the situation is. Talk to the doctor. Chris is like, I don't feel so great. Um, Then they realized Big John outside of the octagon tells Dan, hey, those were actually legal because we were looking at the play. (laughs) Then they come in, reassess it. The doctor's like, hey, Chris, what day is it? He said Tuesday or something. Or they asked him what month it was. He said February. Yeah, there's some, some, some footage out. Um, so based on that, you know, and then they're like, well, this guy's too messed up to continue. Even those were, those were legal. But then Chris is like, no, no, I'm good to go. If this is, if it means either me losing this fight or me continuing, let's continue. Um, but the doctors were the ones that said, no, you can't go. And, you know, ruled it a a TKO. So it's a real mess because essentially first and foremost, there's no instant replay in the UFC. Um, so for Dan Mergliata's decision to be overturned due to basically instant replay isn't correct. Um, right. You know, it isn't, it isn't correct. So I think what's supposed to have happened was Chris gets the win with a Gegard dis- disqualification, but then immediately upon reviewing the, the film, you know that Gegard would have appealed that and they probably would have had a no contest. I, I'm not convinced it should be a no contest based on the actions that happened with the knees, but with the whole mess with the commission, I can see why people want that to be the case. Um, what did you think? <laughs> it's such a mess. Okay, where do I begin? Yeah. yeah, I'll agree with you there. The whole thing was a mess. Um, it's tough. It's tough watching fights live, trying to be able to figure out when and where if you were down or not down in the middle of a fight. Mm-hmm. Um, why do we not have MMA replay in MMA? That's what I want to know. Yeah. If I don't think we should ever stop the fight to go check the big screen. It's not mm. like football where we have all these stops. Right. But if we're to, if if we're stopping the clock already for a foul right. or something like that, then why would we not do the replay? If it's if it's readily available and it's right there and we can and we can bring, write it up, bring it up that quickly. If 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 there's a poke in the eye or a low blow or a questionable call and we're stopping the fight and giving the fighter five minutes to recover. Mm. Use the replay. Make sure the the, the right call was called. Mm-hmm. And if it wasn't a foul, okay, look, we got to resume right away. That wasn't illegal. Boom. End the story. I think that's what needs to happen. Right. Um, what was the, at the end of the day? At the end of the day, what was it called? It was illegal or illegal? T- TKO victory for Gegard because they were illegal knees. Because Gegard, I mean, you, you got to hand it to the guy. He's a very smart fighter and lifted Chris up as he was giving him the knees. So. So his hands are not down, you know, and now when they switched that rule to it had to be the two, two hands. Um, so Gegard lifts him up and those are legal knees. Cause Chris, I know really thought they were illegal. Then Joe Rogan shows him the tape and then he's like, ah, all right, well, I guess I was wrong, but that's such a, like you just said, such a fast thing. You can't necessarily yeah. be mad at the ref for not seeing the discrepancy in the tiniest little thing. So uh, yeah, I'm yeah. not trying to throw Dan under the bus. Uh, no. For that either. I think the the main problem people are having um, is that they're saying, hey, look, Chris tried to, um, you know, play the system and, and, and get Gegard disqualified. So he acted more hurt than he was when he thought they were illegal. And then as soon as he realized, hey, they were legal and I'm going to lose, 
then he acted like he was okay and ready to fight. And I feel like that's the problem most people are having um, with Chris in this situation. And that's what Gegard, you know, did say. Like, he, he's like, look, I don't think Chris really wanted to continue fighting. I think he wanted to get me disqualified. He, you know, Gegard thinks that, yeah, Chris was trying to just work the system. Um, Chris clearly won the first round. He was all over Gegard in that first round. I think Gegard was winning the second round. Who knows what's going to happen? You know, some people are like, oh, well, you never know. Chris was going to come back and you take him down again. Or Gegard was going to... We don't know and we'll never know. Um, but at that time, you know, Gegard was convinced that, yeah, Chris was just trying to uh, work work the system, work the rules, and not he didn't think he wanted to keep fighting. Uh, I've, got to, I've got to partially agree with what you're saying, Gegard, and, and, and a lot of the fans. Um, watching it back, it was a hard knee. Yeah. But watching it back, it seemed that Chris was really, really, you know, doing the taking his time and saying how hurt he was and, and messed up. And it actually started to concern me. At first, I'm thinking, man, Chris is really, really milking this. Uh -huh. And then when they had him, like, try to stand stand and uh, walk a line, and he couldn't even walk, I'm like, man, maybe he's really messed up. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of worried about him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like Chris. Yeah. We're, we're both, obviously, friends with Chris right, and, uh, right. and really Gegard. Right, right. Really good dude, yeah. They're, they're friends of the show. So I had picked Gegard in this one, but I yeah. was kind of rooting for both of them. Yeah. Um, but I have to agree, at the end of the day, if Chris Wyman really, really, really wanted to fight, really wanted to continue, um, he should have expressed that. At the end of the day, if, if, if the referee says, how, can you see how many fingers I'm holding up? And you say, I can't see. Or, he's, or they wait. say, how do you feel? And you say, I, I, I don't know. And if they ask you, do you want to fight? And you don't say yes right away, mm -hmm. they're going to stop the fight. And you have, to, you have to proclaim your innocence, proclaim that you want to yeah. fight. And he didn't do that until the refer until the doctor said you're not able to fight. So I see where that comes from and I do think that the momentum had heavily shifted yeah. into Gegard's favor because Chris was taking Gegard down yeah. so easily yeah. but by the second round Gegard was popping right back up. Mm -hmm. Gegard was starting to get right back up and make Chris pay for it. Yeah, in the first round too, I uh I thought Gegard looked really stiff. Like, you know, I talked to him a lot before this fight and I know his confidence was so high and I I expected him to come out uh and look a lot different than than how he actually did. So, I was uh kind of surprised at how stiff Gegard looked he looked he looked tense you know he looked really tight and wound up and Chris looked so powerful and Chris looked so ready to rock uh and you know just took him down so many times in the first round and it looked easy and yeah even though he didn't necessarily get a lot of damage off there um scoring those takedowns was obviously a big thing and great for his morale and great for his momentum and so yeah I was like wow Chris just totally owned that round um but then yeah Gegard like said loosened up and started to look better in the second um you know at first, Gegard said he would give Chris a rematch, but I actually don't think he he's gonna or wants to. I mean, the interesting thing too, the the other weird angle on this is that that was Chris, uh, Gegard's last fight on his contract, mm -hmm. and you know he he won it, and so that's five in a row for him. Puts him in a great negotiating position when he's saying, "Hey, you know, I'm the top middleweight. I just took out a, your uh, former champion." Um, so I don't necessarily think he. He owes them a, a rematch necessarily in terms of making my steps toward a title shot. I don't think he necessarily owes him that. Um, but it'll be interesting to see if he does sign with the UFC again. You know, I know he wants a lot more money and he's saying, hey, uh, you pay, you know, Mark Hunt this money, I beat Mark Hunt. You pay someone to this money, I beat that guy. Um, and so I think, you know, Gegard has a great case for he does deserve a lot of money and we need European stars. And even though people, some people say he's not a household name, but like, People are really starting to understand that this guy always shows up to, to put on a fight, mm -hmm. um, always throws down. He's, I, I mean, look, totally biased because he, he, we've known him a really long time. But I think he's a terrific fighter, and I think it's a real problem if the UFC let him go. Because I, Gegard actually would leave and go somewhere else because he wants money. He wants to get paid what he's, what he's due. Yep. It's his 50th fight. The dude needs some money. Yeah, and he's fought all over the world. Not needs it, or deserves it, rather. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah. He's fought everywhere in the world. He's yeah. comfortable with going to other organizations. Right. Um, he, he, his stock is at its highest right now. Yeah. He wants more money. It makes sense. Um, if I was Gegard, I wouldn't give, and this is nothing against Chris, right. but if I was Gegard in a business sense, I wouldn't give um, uh, uh, Chris Wyman a rematch either. I'm saying, I'm, I'm screaming for the belt right now. I'm screaming right. for big, big money fights, just like he's doing. I'm saying, yeah. I want to be the next guy in line for the title. I just beat everybody uh, that you handed me, renegotiating the contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's doing the right thing. I don't think he should um, 
business wise, I don't think he should give Chris a rematch. Um, um, I want to know one thing. I want to say about the about the penalty that we're talking about, about the hands down. Right. I um, in previous fights with the new rules, where where you say if your feet are down, two hands have to be down. Right. The old rule, one hand down. Right. So even what I want to get at is. I've spoken to numerous reps before my fights, and yeah. they tell me, okay, you know the new rules with two hands down. I say yes, and they say, if your guy is coming up and down, right, um, that's not acceptable. He has to be planted. And then they, they, they went furthermore to say that if your weight is in your legs, if uh -huh. you have the majority of your weight in your legs and your fingertips are just hanging and touching the mat, that is on – that's at the, the referee's discretion if right. he wants to call that a foul or not. So, in other words, if your weight is in your legs and you're just touching the ground with your fingertips so you don't get hit, right. it's in the referee's discretion to say, I don't care. Even if you had two hands down, if they're barely touching, you might not be called – it might not be called a foul. So I've been told that before, and that's what I'm thinking about in this fight as well, that yeah. even if they say his fingertip was down, his weight was in his legs, so I don't think it should be a foul. I actually just tweeted before the show – I tweeted John McCartney to get yeah. his opinion on that. Yeah. I didn't hear back from him yet. But that is what they're saying, that the referees do have the discretion there where you, you, your actual weight has to be in your right. hands, not just your fingertips touching. And it, it probably wouldn't have been as easy for Gegard to lift him up if there was more, if he was truly right. a downward dog. Um, and, you know, we right. asked, uh, actually yesterday I saw Demetrius Johnson. You know, he's got a fight this weekend, and I asked him about that. We have a clip of it out um, on, on you know, YouTube and everything um, where I asked him his opinion on that, and he said, yeah, he's been in that situation. Um, I think he said it was Dodson. Maybe it was John Dodson. I'm, I'm sorry, I forget who he said it was. But he said he's been in that situation. And, yeah, and, and, and DJ basically, yeah, took the approach of, you know, Chris was playing with fire playing that game and you know it doesn't always work to, to it doesn't always work um so he seemed to agree that you know that it wasn't 100 percent downed and that it was yeah just um a, a, a ploy to make sure you can't knee me because yeah my fingers so so chris agreed on the on i mean dj took the gay guard side yeah. of it um it's tricky you know it's tricky and the, and the thing that's tough about it too um is like we were saying, Chris, you know, Chris is a, a is a great dude, and you know that this is, you know, it makes it three in a row, and nobody's trying to lose three in a row, um, and you can understand the uh, the 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 frantic mind state in all of that, um, but I personally don't think, and maybe maybe you could talk to this. I was talking to his management about this last night, and I said, you know, I hate that they said, hey, what day is it, or you know, what month is it, and he said the wrong answer because they were like, listen, he's the kind of guy that when he's in there, he probably doesn't know his own name. Like he's in the freaking zone, you know? And, yeah. um, and I agree with that. And I, and so th that I don't like the criteria by which the, the doctors judged Chris unfit. Okay. So he said Tuesday, it's Saturday, like Matt Sarah in that clip is screaming. He's like, he never freaking knows what day it is. Um, <laughs> so I don't know for you, like if, if literally, yeah, if you're in the middle of a fight, if in the middle of the fight, um, they're like, oh, hey, Alan, by the way, what's the square root of 16? You know what I mean? Like, you'd be like, what the fuck? I don't know. I don't know if that's fair to say, but I think that that's not necessarily fair to say that Chris was totally out of it because he didn't know the exact date. I agree. I agree. That's why we're the fighters and we're not our managers. Okay, right. We have managers and other people to do the thinking for us. We're there to fight. We put our bodies through these repetitions day in, day out. Yeah. This is what we do. Our bodies know how to respond. We get rocked all the time, mm -hmm. and it takes a minute or two for our, our, our joggled mind to get yeah. back. But our body still knows what to do. We still right. know how to cover up. Right. If the guy's if the guy's limp on the ground and knocked out, that's one thing. But just because he's not answering the specific right or wrong question doesn't mean that he doesn't know how to put his hands up or right. fight back because that's what we've been doing our entire lives. So I think if they would have let him continue, it would have still been a, a, a good fight. Yeah. I thought Mustafi had the momentum, but he was still able to fight, especially once he found out that uh, the fight was over. All of a sudden, he seemed a lot more aware. Yeah. Um, and again, that's not a dig at Chris. It's just the obvious of what people saw mm -hmm. when watching the fight. I want to say with that said, Man, it was heartbreaking at the end of the fight yes. to see the interview with Chris Wyman and to see how torn up he was from this. You could see how bad he wanted this. Not only, like you yes. mentioned, is this his third loss in a row, but the fight in New York again to lose again um, in this kind of fashion. He wanted this so bad for himself, for his family, for the fans. He wasn't able to deliver. And you can see what kind of guy he is, man. He's, one, he's a guy that 
brought the, the mixed martial arts to the state yes. of New York. Yes. And he hasn't been able to give the fans what they wanted, and it tore him up inside. I tweeted him right after saying, you know, you'll be back. But um, yeah. it, it, it hurt me to see him that hurt after the fight. Uh, totally agree. Totally agree. And we're sitting there, you know, it's tough because we're, we're watching this and we're at work. And, you know, I, I didn't have to go on right after that fight. I had to go on after uh, the DC one. But, yeah, I mean, we're all in there. Yeah, it, it, it takes a lot, and it's an emotional thing. And when you know how hard somebody's worked and, you know, it's a it's that crappy crappy situation and my heart you know really goes out for chris and now i guess you know they're saying they won't ever fight in new york because i know they you know there's a fox card yeah. later on this summer um and the idea was to have chris on that and that is so heartbreaking to think that he's done all that work like you said to get the the mma even legalized in the state and then for it to, to bite him in the butt like it does yeah um is really really heartbreaking uh so I don't, you know, I don't know how they're going to resolve the situation, and I don't know what would be next there. Um, and it was, you know, and, and, to, and to Gegard's credit too, in the octagon afterwards, his brother came in with the flag, and he's like, "Don't celebrate right now!" Like that's not, you know, because Gegard yeah. looked pissed too, because he's just like, "What the, you know?" He didn't want to win like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that was funny when he was kind of having that yeah. argument. I know, I know. With he's like, his shut, stop, put that. it down. I don't want to do that right now. But um, but I I thought I thought Gegard played the situation very well. He, yeah. you know, he did what he was supposed to do as a fighter. Right. Um, I thought the momentum was going his way after the fight was over. Like he said, he didn't want to rub it in Chris Weidman's yep. face. It wasn't the way he wanted to win. He said the right things on the mic and he's doing the right thing yep. post fight by saying, look, I'm in, I, I'm doing what I got to do. Yep. Pay me. Let's have the big fights. He's, he's making all the right moves right yep. now. Yep. He absolutely is. Well, I mentioned, um, that DJ, uh, I saw DJ yesterday and we know UFC and Fox is this weekend. Uh, Demetrius is taking on Wilson Hayes. So we've got a, a great, um, full media Q and a with Demetrius. And he talks about, you know, his, uh, uh, last defense with Tim Elliott. And he talks about what, what he wants to achieve in the record books and everything. This is his 10th, 10th title defense, Alan, 10 defenses. Dude is so good. Um, so I also have a one-on-one -on -one interview with Rose Nami Yunus and uh, Karate Hottie Michelle Watterson was there. So we have um, a Q&A with her as well. So some some good stuff if people want to get hyped uh, hyped for that. But for you, like, I just am curious what your take is on DJ. Because to me, he's so fun to watch fight. Because it's like to watch, it's like poetry in motion. You know what I mean? The guy's freaking flawless. He's awesome. He's the man. Um, I'm just waiting for the smaller octagon to be lowered into the into the ring. When Demetrius fights, right. they put in that uh, that fifteen foot octagon. The WEC, <laughs> the little the little cage. Yeah. Right. No, I'm I'm playing. I mean, I really do think sometimes maybe if it was at all possible, a small octagon would benefit yeah. the flyweight division. Yeah. That way, there's not so much room. Sure. But um, he's awesome. He's he's doing everything right. He's another guy that's just that's just elevating his sport, winning in every mm -hmm. way possible, beating every different test possible yeah. from you know a uh, a. Uh, uh, wrestlers and strikers and submitting guys at the last second he's breaking records mm -hmm. i'm really curious to see if he's able to get past this this test this weekend and then cement uh, you know get another title defense and break another record right is the super fights then gonna gonna materialize because i know he does want the super yes. fights um but he but he's kind of more focused on clearing out his division breaking the record and then maybe the super fights come yeah he's uh he really is great um so I, I'm looking forward to seeing that one. And I honestly, the, the Michelle Waters and Rose Nami Yunus fight, I think is going to be so good. Uh, both these girls just want to go out and just wreck shop. Um, yeah. And, you know, they're both they're they're both so incredibly likable. Like this is again, this is one of those where I'm like, why does somebody have to lose? Um, yeah. You know, they're both they're both just really cool. So I know they're going to go out there uh, and really put on a great show. Um, so we have that coming up. And I'm supposed to talk to Kote uh, later on today as well. That was one thing from uh, the other night uh, I wanted to mention, too, you know, is that he was retiring. And, you know, he and I had spoken before uh, and I kind of knew that was coming. He's got, you know, a lot of other stuff in his life that he does um, besides doing the broadcasting for the UFC in French. And he has a new little baby and everything. Um, no. So I just yeah, I just want to wish him well. I know at one point we were trying to hook the two of you up to fight each other. Uh, yeah. But Pat that's a really good dude, and um, I mean, he had a great career. So definitely, definitely going out on a high note, even though he didn't win the fight with Tiago. Yeah, no, I would have loved to have fought Cote before his career was over. Yeah. Um, just because he, he's a, a good name and a good ambassador for the sport. But if you if you talk to him, please send him my best. Oh, yeah. Congratulate him on, on an amazing career. Uh, it was fun to watch him. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, so Alan, so you said next week. You're going to New York, but so have they given you... There's still no fight news on Fight Week or anything like that? Man, 
I'm still waiting. But I think what's going on is um, I've got some teammates fighting uh, on the Nash Nashville call. Yes, Danielle, call. I got to call her. I got to hit her up for an interview. I'll hit her up for you. So, Danielle, cool. my teammate is fighting on the Nashville card. My manager will be there. He's going to hopefully then talk to Sean Shelby, get some stuff done. I heard that the, the normal international fight week that I'm looking to fight on in July normally has three cards. Yes. I heard recently that one of the cards was dropped, so there's only two cards okay. um, going to be that week. So I need to get things rolling. I need to make sure I lock down a fight. But, um, yeah, hopefully in the next couple of weeks um, we get that locked down. I want to get one. I'm All eager right, to I get back so in too. there. I'm so eager to go in there and, like, knock somebody out, man. Like, I feel like I didn't get the fight last time. Yeah. It ended kind of suddenly. Um, I didn't get to show all my new tools, and um, I haven't let myself get out of shape. Yeah. I could see myself, I don't want to say going, but reverting back to the old Allen in mm -hmm. my next fight. I'm going to fight smart. But, man, I'm, I'm going to throw some leather. I'm so excited to get back in there and get, get on that win column, get the bonus, knock somebody out. I'm looking forward to it. I love it. I love it. Um, well, awesome. Yeah, I'm actually working uh, at Fox on the Nashville show. So, yeah, I'll have to hook up with Danielle. Nice. It's a big fight for her, fighting Jessica Penny. That's a big deal. She, uh, yeah, uh, Jessica's a great fighter. And, yeah. and with a win, she jumps into the rankings. So, this is, you know, and, and Danielle's only third fight. She could be in, yeah. in the top 15, top 10. So, she's been training her butt off. She's been doing all the right things. And I'm excited to see her evolution. Uh, in, in the UFC now. Yeah, that's really cool. That's awesome. All right, well, so uh, where can and I don't have any tennis matches this weekend because of the Easter break. So some woman is uh, is getting to live another week. Oh, <laughs> man, I, I don't know. All these people that work at Fox, they win, they get cocky. I don't know what's going on. I DC mean, is talking about all I do is all I do is cash checks and, and, get, and get, yeah, belts. get championship <laughs> belts and this and that. Well, the funny thing oh, is, is man. you know, because they they do, even though it's you know whatever, just ladies tennis, whatever. It is a USTA thing. Like there are league rankings. There is a number that goes next to your name. And um, last season, I didn't get a very high ranking or rating because. Uh, I was, he had me playing doubles a lot with some people that weren't that good. No, And so if you don't win, like your, you know, your numbers go down and I was pissed. I was like, I am a winner, you know, uh, and I'm not winning these. And so like, I'm extra motivated. And like, if you're playing singles and you win your, that it's worth more points. And also the, um, number by which you win is worth more points. So me mm -hmm. blasting that chick six, uh, uh, six, one in the second one, uh, is good for me. Well, I, I got to say, I think it was absolutely the right decision, Karen, on kicking Wade off of your doubles team yeah. and going as singles. It, it was the right move. You're going right. to have a, a prosperous career now. Right, right. It's so funny. <laughs> you know what I did, though, literally, though, because we had to spin the thing, and I was thinking about what you said where you're like, pick one eye. Don't try to stare down at both eyes. Just pick one eye. Pick one yeah. eye. And it was so funny because I was laughing to myself of, like, how I'm going to try to intimidate her, and, like, I didn't. She was actually, she was Thai. I mean, not Thai. She was Vietnamese. I thought she was Thai at first. She was Vietnamese. Nice lady, but I'm not the type that wants to sit there and like chit chat while we're playing. So I yeah, talked yeah. to her a little bit at the end, but I was like, my, the other people are playing and they'll tell their opponent, oh, hey, like, good point. I'm like, I'm not telling you good point. <laughs> no, no, I like, so she got nothing from me. Um, yeah. And literally the more she started to melt down, the more pleasant my voice was when I would call out the score. So I, I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was fun. You're going to keep on winning. You're yeah, going to get maybe. a target on your back. Then I'll be like, oh, that's Karen Bryant. She's on TV. We got to We got to knock her off. Yeah, we got to get right. her off. That's right, baby. Good stuff. All right, <laughs> so where can people find you on social media? Nothing's changed, guys. At Alan Joven, check me out. Shout out to my sponsors. Nice. New breed. Uh, and, uh, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoy the show. There's a lot to talk about. I feel like I've been analyzing the fights over the weekend all weekend because everybody's been talking about little things. So uh, it was a fun show. I'm glad we got to chat about it. Yeah, absolutely. And for sure we want to hear what people have to say. So you guys add your own uh, uh, opinions and stuff in the comment section. On YouTube, obviously, you're watching Karen Bryant. That's the same tag for me on Twitter. On Instagram, I'm KB Heat. We have MMA Heat on, uh, on all platforms. Um, and, uh, you know, so we put a lot of stuff up. And like I said, we've got some stuff there with Demetrius and Michelle and Rose. And we have uh, Fabricio Verdum interview and Rafael Cordero interview that we're still going to be putting out a lot of stuff coming so uh, so definitely stay tuned but thank you alan and uh safe travels to you next week absolutely thank you cheers See guys you.